Just as with normal rotor brush, after you've created a good base frame, you need to start stepping one frame at a time away from the base frame in the direction that the propagation arrows point in your span. I'm going to move backwards in time here because we do have this head turn from her, which I think is going to be problematic. I'm going to press page up to go back one frame. Again, you can use the numeric keys one and two to do this while in either rotor brush or refine edge. And you'll notice that these refine edge areas are tracking along with rotor brushes automatic tracking of the propagation boundary. It's not perfect, but it's very helpful. I need to watch here to make sure a gap doesn't open up. I'll press page up again, and it looks like it's holding up pretty well. I'll keep going back in time until I start to see any problems appear. So far, so good. Keeping an eye on that shoulder. Okay, here's a problem that's starting to pop up. As she's starting to turn her head and the propagation boundary moves, Rotor Brush is auto-correcting my refined mat strokes to be cantilevered away from her normal outline. So I'm going to need to be careful that this doesn't get pulled so far up that we miss out on our partially transparent areas. As a matter of fact, I see a little green peeking through here. So I'll drag back to this area again. And now I'll get some of my partial transparency back again. I'll press page down to make sure I don't have any strange gaps in my frames here and go a little bit earlier in time. Again, my refined mat stroke has been pulled upward by the changing propagation boundary. No problem. I'll just add to it. And there's some more partial transparency. I'm focusing on the left side now. I can go back and look at the right side later on. Page up again. Oh, I definitely need to fill in this area. And I need to look for where some of this hair is flying around through here. And there I picked up a couple strands that I otherwise might have been missing. And that helps. Make sure I didn't miss them from an earlier frame. Yeah, they're flying out a little bit right in through here as well. So let's grab those. Now, Rotor Brush and the Refine Edge tool is highly automated and is doing a lot of my work for me. But as with a normal Rotor Brush tool, you need to remain vigilant. For example, you see parts of this shoulder are becoming partially transparent again. And that would be a bad thing. We don't want parts of her shoulder disappearing. Again, I'll compare with render off and on again. So I'm going to hold Option or Alt, make a corrective stroke right in that area, and put her shoulder back together. A little bit earlier in time. Still looking pretty good earlier. I'm going back and forth, and I see I am missing some flyaway hairs here that I want to make sure I grab. There we go. Earlier. Still grabbing those hairs and keep progressing back through time, making sure I'm not missing anything, such as this extra gap opening up in here. Again, I have a problem with a little bit of a hole appearing where her shoulder should be, right there. A lot of that is caused by the color spill from the background. I can try making very small corrective strokes. I'll hold Command or Control, make my brush smaller, then hold Option or Alt and drag through there to correct that shoulder area. But you'll see that quite often, Rotor Brush and the Refine Edge tool gets overtrained and removes all of the partial transparency in that part of her hair. Well, just like any other tool in After Effects, don't try to do everything with just one tool. I'll undo to get back to where I have my nice partial transparency. And if necessary, I can go use something such as the normal paintbrush tool. Drag it up here where you can see it better change its mode to alpha channel only, making sure I'm painting in white, which will fill in or make the alpha channel opaque. And if I wanted to, I could go ahead and add a few corrective strokes to the alpha channel itself to fill in that part of her shoulder. I could also do the same thing if I need to cut a hole through her. I'll switch to black for the alpha channel, which means remove, and if necessary, cut some additional holes in the alpha. You get the idea. Change my view back to Rotor Brush and Refine Edge, go back to my X-Ray view, and I'll switch back to my Refine Edge tool. And just to make sure I'm not missing anything, I'm gonna go back to my base frame and step forward and make sure I don't have any issues on the right side of her head with the Refine Edge tool mistaking colored glints in her hair as actually being transparent areas. Again, this original image has a lot of spill, and you'll see some of the green and blues from the background are being reflected in her hair. Since those colors are so similar to the background, there's a chance Refine Edge might think that they are the background. I'll turn Render back on, 
I'll press tilde to go back to full screen. And I'll just make sure that areas like this aren't getting eroded when they shouldn't be. I can turn the x-ray off and just double check what's in those areas. For example, this is a blonde hair that should not be transparent. So I'm going to go back to my base frame, which looks pretty good. I can use Option or Alt X to toggle this X-ray off and on. So what I'm going to do is hold down the Option or Alt key, get my Subtract Refine Matte tool and say, Bad Rotor Brush. Don't cut that out. Leave that fully opaque. I'll step forward a frame. You'll see there's now this hole where Rotor Brush is no longer considering that it should even be processing that area. Option or Alt X. I'd say that's a strand as well that I need to keep opaque. So I'll hold down the Option key. Carefully remove that strand of hair. And then step forward in time and make sure we're not accidentally cutting holes in our head. Because who needs extra holes in their head? And I can move on from there. So now you have a basic idea of how to set up your base frame for Refine Edge and how to propagate those movements earlier and later in time, including some ideas for corrective strokes. In the next couple movies, I'm going to talk about some of the fine tuning you can do with the Refine Edge tool, as well as how some parameters have changed for Rotor Brush itself.